Thank you for joining us today on Earthfall. Welcome to the program, Amayo Lakasim, Fisheries and Aquaculture make up 3 to 4 percent of Nigeria's annual GDP. The sector is also a key contributor to fulfilling the population's nutritional requirements, accounting for about 50 percent of the supply of animal source food, and it is an important source of essential dietary nutrients. In addition, fisheries, aquaculture, and associated value chains generate employment and income for a significant number of fishers, fish farmers, and fish traders. Yet, the potential for fish production through aquaculture, artisanal and inland fisheries, domestic fish production still falls far below demand. As a result, the country imports half of the fish it consumes. To reduce the level of fish imports and decrease the drain on foreign exchange, the government has selected aquaculture as one of the priority food value chains targets for expansion and development. The agro-processing productivity advancement and livelihood improvement support initiative is one of the tools the government is using to boost fish production. But how effective is it? We'll find out today on the program. Do stay with us. A new cottage fish processing center with its blast freezing room also provided with a standby generator. And to ensure supply, more than 100 cages have been provided for fish farmers. So what could possibly go wrong with the Afuwo cluster in Badagri, supported by the Lagos State Agro-Processing Productivity Enhancement and Livelihood Improvement Support Project, a World Bank assisted program? And what stops beneficiaries here from scaling up? The appeals Lagos has exposed fish farmers here to cage culture, a practice that involves growing fish in existing water resources while being enclosed in a net cage that allows free flow of water. The technology enables fish farmers to tap opportunities in Lagos' vast network of aquatic resources and extensive coastline while also boosting their productivity. Beneficiaries here were given juvenile tilapia and fish feeds, but today almost all of them are empty. Majority of the owners belong to cooperatives. Joshua Olatunji, a beneficiary of the project, belongs to the Ashford Cooperative. The 10 member cooperative has 10 cages. Today, they still want more. We are having 1.5 realized from the harvest. At the end of the day, spending about 800, 900 for the maintainers. Nothing left to continuity. Talk about the stock, feed, and continuity. So that's major our challenge. While the youth lament the lack of capital, some of the women are thinking starting over may be the best option for them. The Ogbonga Women Multipurpose Society barely recovered their investment despite the help they got from the government in setting up the cages. They got 10,000 juvenile tilapia, but at the end of the cycle, they lost about 3,000. It's a viable business because the tilapia fish um, is not, uh, the, the farmers are not so much in the country, so there is market for it. There's market for it, everything is fine. But the problem we discovered is that you can see the boats, while they are moving, they cause waves in the water. And the wave is, you know, our, our whole culture is at the forefront. So the effect of the wave is so much on the, on the, cages, on the cages, and it's uh, causing um, breakages, you know, of our cage. So after we are vested, we discover that we cannot just, you know, um, we cannot just stock again because we have to do some repairs. So that was one of the challenges we had. Then the last set that we harvested, we had issue with the salinity of the water. You know, it's a salt water, but at that period, the salinity was so it was so consecrated that we lost a lot of our fishes. So they were, and we are now trying to see what time is best for us to stock to avoid that salinity of the water so that we will not lose our, our fishes. So that is one of the challenges we are having. Then the wave, you can see that since we've been here, you know, when the uh, boat passes, you can see the wave, the impact on the cages are so much that, okay, what do we do? So we are just thinking if it is possible for us to move it to another position. We are trying to locate position, but the moving of the cage is another thing because we have to repair, we have to move it, and it's going to cost us so much. So at the end of the day, what we have vested that we have sold, we can't dance that we have made profits. 
because even the profit and part of the capital is going to go into the repair and the moving of the cage culture to another uh, position. They will also have issue with security. The security is not kind, but if you, if you look around, there's nothing like CCTV, and you can't do away with theft. So we have that challenge as well. They will also have challenge with um, a feed, adulterated feeds. Because most times when you give them a little feed, at the end of the day, some of it making them to grow. Some can, their growth can be ruined. Some can even die. Most times it costs mortality. Then the one that's now really slapped us was the consistent increment in feed. The feed you buy today, you can't take the same amount of money back to the market to buy feed. So that has given us. So after selling, you know, we put our money together. We are like, ah, where do we go from here? We have the cages to repair. Then after repairing, how do we get the feed? that will sustain the cost. If we are giving 10,000 pieces, we shouldn't do less than 10,000. Normally, we are supposed to increase, you know, being that it's an empowerment uh, project, we are supposed to invest and if we expand our cages, maybe from 10 to 15 or say, or something, then we, you know, we stock. But now, we are even at the, uh, how do we stock? How do we retain the 10,000 fishes that were given to us at first? If we buy it, how are we going to feed? Because the cost of uh, production, as at the time it was given to us, is almost times two. It's almost times two. So those are one of the challenges that we are facing. Then the climate is not helping. Because by the time we know, we discover that the climate is what is causing the salinity of the water, making it concentrated. And we can't even say this is the actual amount. You know, if you say, okay, maybe August, the salinity will, will go up. We can say, okay, let us talk, do our calculations, six, seven months, we have harvested. Then we wait till maybe October, they will restock. But now we can't even do that uh, calculation at the moment. While investment in the sector is very important, Stakeholders believe that lack of expertise in production, management, and the value chain will prevent the results that is being expected. But this is supposed to be a prayer that's supposed to open up such a community. So we have up, up to 500, over 500 cages here. So this is a cage culture system. This is perhaps the best system you can use for aquaculture, whereas you are making use of the natural environment. But unfortunately, even with all the shortcomings they had here, the issue of the uh, tidal waves, the strength of the tidal waves is, is, is high here because of the boats, because this is a commuter you know, uh, path. So, and you see, just like you can see the kind of waves coming in. So when they hit the cages, there's always a friction among them. Unfortunately, because of the fact that they are too close together, if they had done the proper stop of having spaces in between cages, then there be no issue of impact on the cages. And you have a bit of a caution of salt, salty air, salt water sometimes, where you can see that some of the cages are red. So when you, call, when you have those two issues together, then you, 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 you won't be surprised by the state of the cages here. They need to space all these cages. So they have a minimum of two, three meters in between each section of the cage. Because when the World Fish Director came here a couple of years ago, he was surprised. He called me and I said, was I aware of the way they laid out? I said, no. I said, I told them that you don't lay cages like this. And he told them too. And I told them, at least, a white man has come to tell you the truth I've been telling you. So because that, that's the most unfortunate part of it. Nigerians don't really believe their own people when it comes to expertise. So I was really happy when he came around and told them the plain truth that this project cannot go on like this with this kind and this is just the result. So if it's, if it's not done quickly, then I don't see it going beyond a couple of years because normally cage construction, or constructed cages should last at least seven, eight years before you start talking about repairs, even when you're doing a bit, a bit of maintenance within those years. Two. At the start of the project, Afowo was expected to be a model of what can be achieved for the cage culture. And now it seems its survival is dependent on the help the farmers can get going forward. The equipment in the cottage industry lack electricity to power them. The sad reality is that the instructions to power the fish descaling machine are written in Chinese. The fish and the sign of machine. abandonment is all very visible with the equipment gathering cobweb.
The, the state government does not just establish a project like this for the youth, younger ones. After, after establishing this, there should be a team, monitoring team, continuity project, monitor at least three, three months to come and check me what they are doing activities. At the same time, to think of their laxics, where they need to come up, so that the continuity of the project will continue. Look at this in the, uh, 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 cottage industry now. So you get it now, state government are doing enough but it less for the continuity and the maintenance of part of the, the whole project. The cottage industry, you know, once there's not fish in the cage, there's no way the function of the industry, cottage industry can work. Once they're having fish in the cage, ready by harvest, then we fully to operate the uh, industry. So that's just it. For most times, the industry doesn't work? It doesn't work. It's only, it's only when we have fish. Ready How many to times harvest. in the year do you harvest? Actually, according to the according to the uh, water system, we can run twice in the year. One can go for tilapia, the other will go for catfish. You know, the running of intensive is, is different, so we can run twice in the year on different species. But now you're doing only one. We are doing only one, and which then? is um, uh, tilapia. And it is only when you harvest that this place works. It can be open, can be open so for operation. So now people are not bringing their things. People are not bringing for now. New interventions, the government to Lagos, the government in collaboration with the government, uh, World Bank to uh, set up to take care of that challenge. Or, uh, yeah, but um, still, uh, as you're providing or providing a solution, another latent challenge too is um, it's becoming obvious. Uh, and one of those latent challenges that we have now is um, cost of um, um, operating the, the cottage industry. That electricity is like a no-no. Uh, cost of fueling is on the high side. So if we can have um, solar um, installation, I think that would do us a great deal. Because already the cost of production for the fish is on the high side. Now, post harvest um, activities too, because of the cost of fuel is higher. So everything now comes back or comes on the product. Eventually, it becomes um, a challenge for consumers to, to patronize. So all of these areas we need to uh, look at. Then um, researchers too should be more involved Researchers, um, we need experts in uh, luminology, um, uh, water, water management. We need experts in um, cage design and construction. We need experts in, in breeding and genetics of new species of fish too. One thought that those are the things that you have done before they started. Yeah, we, we started, um, we, we don't need to start or we don't need to wait for a perfect um, condition to start. And uh, we've had bountiful habits, we've had successful um, seasons and um, currently too, we don't see if we are giving up, but challenges that came up now that to fix some of these cages is a bit on the high side because even the materials we need to build the cages, everything is on the high side. In recent years, the demand for fish and seafood has been on the rise globally, and Nigeria has not been left out of this trend. Fish and seafood are essential sources of protein and other essential nutrients, and they play a significant role in promoting food security and economic development. However, the capture of fishery sector in Nigeria, which has been the main source of fish supply, is facing several challenges, such as overfishing, habitat degradation, and declining fish stocks. This has led to a shift towards aquaculture production as an alternative source of fish supply. Nigeria is the second largest aquaculture producer in Africa, with a high demand and preference for fish among consumers. However, the role and potential of aquaculture to achieve goals for improving smallholder income, dietary diversification and women's empowerment have yet to be realized. Fish imports currently cost the government about $1 billion a year of valuable foreign exchange. 
pursuing a strategy to control fish imports while increasing fish supplies through facilitating inclusive aquaculture growth and increasing inland artisanal catch is far more likely to meet future fish supply demand gap and improve the national economic outlook. At this point, we have done a lot of uh, experiments. We've also gone into the field to see how we can help to augment what we import as fish for food. So, and the, our fisher folks that are doing a lot of things as in the alternative means of getting these fishes, which is a aquaculture. Some have even gone beyond that to go to the open water to have cages where they can stock fish and harvest at their own time, supplementing what they get from the nature with uh, artificial feed. The situation is growing. And fish, as we all know, is part of a, somehow the cheapest uh, aspect of protein one can get aside the meat. So fish is cheap. So, but now, since we cannot get enough that will feed everyone, we have to use alternative means, which is the aspect of uh, aquaculture, whereby people that are uh, maybe the fisher folk living in the, along the rivers or the lagoons that used to go out to fish, if the stocks are not giving them what they needed, they have an alternative means to get these fishes to the people. And so many people have gone into fish farming. Nigerian agriculture at all levels along the value chain is profitable. Researchers say smallholders practice fish farming for profit. Smallholder catfish farmers have higher per hectare net incomes than agriculture farmers. World Fish Foresight model studies indicate that smallholder fish farming could be promoted as primary employment, while catfish farming could increase household income by 26% if practiced as secondary employment. However, sustainable and profitable business requires investment, input and knowledge. Availability and accessibility to better farming practices and inputs are inadequate and in some instances, like quality seed and feed, largely unavailable. Experts say increasing smallholder access to finance, quality input, technical services and modern technology will improve productivity and incomes. But you have a lot of issues based on the environment itself, the policy, uh, the, 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 the direction of where the country goes when it comes to in the aquaculture. Because if you look at it very well, aquaculture is not something being taken seriously in Nigeria. If you have an industry that should supply your fish, for example, I'll give you an example now. We, in Nigeria, if you look at the FAO uh, standard, we should be consuming 4 million metric tons of fish per annum. But in Nigeria presently, both from the captured fisheries and the fishermen, the people doing aquaculture, the fish farmers, we are not doing up to a million metric tons. So presently, we import about 1.2, 1.5 million metric tons of frozen fish yearly. That's a lot of resources for, for our forex. So uh, when you look at those, you now say, okay, why are we here? We have a water body that transcends from Badagri down to Cross River State, 853 kilometers. We have about a thousand dams in Nigeria. So you keep on wondering how are we in this situation? You keep on importing fish. Fish and other aquatic foods offer unmatched potential to nourish Nigeria's growing population. As an essential source of micronutrients and animal protein, the increased availability and consumption of safe, nutritious aquatic foods can improve food and nutrition security, especially among vulnerable populations. Developing sustainable and inclusive aquatic food systems will increase the country's food sovereignty and create economic opportunities for Nigerians while respecting the natural environment. A thriving aquaculture experts say promises to complement marine and inland fisheries to achieve multiple wins across the sustainable development agenda. The whole cage, the space we have used in that place is not even for some, uni for some research institutions, it's not even up to one tenth of what they use. And when you go to Southeast Asia, you find um, um, such facilities covering hundreds, 
several hectares of, of space on water. So it is not in here, it's just like a drop in the ocean. But it's supposed to be a proof of concept. So fortunately, I think that the Obama government have seen the potential, even though they made huge loss this time around. But they can see the, they are educated, they can see the potential. The difference with the local people is that even if they see potential, uh, this thing is subsistence for them. And once they run into debt, some of them will have to look for other means of livelihood to pay off their debt. Even though they will still come back to that thing sometimes because it's what they, are, they have traditionally done over centuries. But um, it's usually difficult for them. And that's where we also talk about insurance, especially climate, um, re climate risk insurance, you know. Uh, these are some of the things that the people are facing. If, um, if the um, stock of the Ogun government was insured, uh, they will not make as much loss as they have. The International Ocean Institute in Nigeria strives for the conservation of marine resources within the broader goal of promoting peace in the oceans. Through education, training and capacity building, the institution supports the creation of a cadre of enlightened professionals in particular who share its beliefs and contribute to fulfilling its mission. It is advancing citizen science for seas and ocean research. This involves members of the public in the observation, analysis and eventually also the design of scientific research. These are some of the easier ways that we can start letting people get involved because that's, that's what that is ownership, inclusivity, that this data comes from my community, we collected it and so on. But it helps, it doesn't, I don't have to be the scientist that have, because if I collect it in the community, even if I spend my money to collect the data in our community, that community will still be highlighted that that data is from there. And as a scientist, I need to acknowledge, if they provide me such a data and I published it, they have to be well acknowledged. So. I mentioned information about citizen science, ocean literacy, particularly because our domain, because we need, the, the example of the saltwater intrusion is that people don't really understand the landscape, the morphology, uh, uh, the, the geomorphology of our waters. There is a lagoon in, uh, in Benin, and there is a Lagos lagoon. These two lagoons opens to the, uh, open to the, uh, Atlantic Ocean. And from there, when you have the storm surges and the highest, highest of water, which is called the spring tide, the water is forced and pushed in into this lagoon. And unfortunately, this Badagri Creek is in between the two lagoons and there is a net flow of water. So when this goes in and the, the salinity increases and it starts flowing, then it starts affecting the fishes that cannot tolerate. And as we know, uh, some and uh, because these animals are put in cages, they cannot move. If you put if you put uh, salt in water, uh, where there is a snail, it will start moving away. Except if it caught up with it and it will die. But if it can move away, it will run away. But when you are in a cage, you cannot move. And that is why understanding the geomorphology of the area, understanding the information about the physical, the chemical, and the biological component of the water, because even there may still come a time because part of the problem is because you are feeding the fish, you are releasing certain, because they cannot eat all the fish. Some of the uh, feed we still get into the water. It's providing more nutrients. And by providing more nutrients, certain organisms also will also grow. And by growing more, they must start having what is called uh, uh, agar blooms, agar, that have some properties that may kill the fish that may even produce some toxins that will hide in the fish and so on. So all this need a holistic. So it is uh, the role of scientists, we are trained to understand the environment. We are trained to go on this. We also need assistance of people. That's why I call the citizen science or, or citizenship participation. We call it citizenship, uh, citizenship science, uh, citizen science and participation. They are not scientists, but they are provider of information. Because this information is needed by all, not only the scientists. And if everybody gets involved, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll all be smiling for it. Fish have been identified as a source of inexpensive protein for the nutritional benefit of human beings. Fish production can lead to poverty reduction and ensure food security. 
the traditional practice of growing fish in the wild has proven to be inadequate and is faced with a lot of challenges, among which is low catch. Therefore, experts are advocating that aquaculture can be a solution to Nigeria's dwindling fish production, but efforts need to be made to ensure investment and intervention efforts like the appeals project in Nafuo must be monitored and not be left to decay. That's our show for the week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.